Welcome to the Church in the Rio Grande Valley. We are delighted today to be joined by Father Manuel Rasso with the Diocese of Brownsville. Father Manuel Rasso is overseeing the Permit Diaconate uh, Formation Program here in the Diocese, and so we are delighted that you are back. Thank you. Thank um, you. Father uh, Rasso has been a priest for 11 years now. Mm -hmm. And he was just returned. He was he has been a professor of theology at the University of St. Thomas mm -hmm. um, in Houston. And you also recently completed your doctorate in yes. sacred theology. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. Um, so we're so thrilled that you are back in our in our diocese thank you. and you are overseeing not only the formation program for permanent deacons but you are um, also at a new parish yes i'm going to be as I'm, i was assigned by bishop flores at um, san felipe de jesus parish in uh, in bronzeville uh, i'm going to take over on uh, august the 31st and um, i'm very very excited of uh, being in that parish. Well, we are delighted that you are back, but I know that today our focus will be on the uh, diaconate program yes. and the formation. Yes. Uh, tell us a little bit about um, the process or what the importance of this formation in our diocese. Okay. Um, first of all, we have to um, make a difference between a transitional deacon and a permanent deacon. Permanent deacon. Um, do you know that? Um, um, we have an we had an ordination last uh, month. Uh, the uh, deacon um, Mauricio, the one who was ordained, um, but he was ordained as a transitional deacon. So that means that he eventually is going to um, be ordained as a presbyter, as a as a priest, as a priest. The permanent deacons, the permanent deacons are um, part of the holy orders, part of the holy orders, but they don't transition to the to the presbyterate. So um, most of these uh, these uh, deacons um, they're taken from um, from families from um, most of them are are married and um, and um, yeah they uh, they were recruiting now um, uh, men that um, are interested in the, in this uh, in becoming a, in becoming a deacon becoming a deacon we can trace um, the diaconate to the um, apostolic era in our church in our church in um in the book of the Acts of the apostles in chapter six we can see how um um the first deacons the first deacons were chosen among the holy people holy holy christians holy holy men and uh, and they were chosen to serve the poor and the widows the widows so um one of the main work of the deacons at that time was to serve the poor and to serve the 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 the, um, the widows. So um, um, the deacons, since the beginning of, of uh, Christianism, they were the helpers of uh, of the bishops, the bishops, and then they become the helpers also of the predators, of the predators. So uh, that's the um, origin of uh, of um, of the deacons, the deacons, and um, um, the deacons. They have a three main um what we call munera or ministries uh, the ministry of the world the ministry of the liturgy and the ministry of uh, of charity charity um the ministry of the world what is the ministry of the world the ministry of the world is the, when the deacon is by the orders of, the, of uh, by his ordination he's um he will be uh, able to proclaim the word of god to explain the word of God, to transmit the word of God to the uh, to the people. I don't know if you have noticed in, um, in the mass uh, who proclaims the gospel is uh, the deacon. The deacon and um, the deacon is not a priest. It's not a priest. The deacon is a minister. We never have to get confused with that. And the priests are only the presbyter and the bishop, the episcopus. So um, the, the deacon is not is not a priest. He's a minister. He's a minister, but he shares the holy order. He, he, um, uh, as I said, he can proclaim the word of God. He can uh, give blessings. He can blessings, and um, uh, he can say the homily on uh, on on the mass. Mass. So um, that's the difference between a, a a deacon and a presbyter. For instance, the the deacon he cannot hear confessions. 
he cannot uh, celebrate mass, he cannot consecrate, he cannot consecrate, but he can celebrate baptisms, he can celebrate, uh, he can celebrate quinceañeras, he can celebrate um, um, weddings, weddings, and um, but he, as I said, he cannot hear confession, he cannot anoint people, he cannot uh, uh, and cel celebrate uh, celebrate mass. So um, and and. Um, in, 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 the, in the liturgy, um, the monad of liturgy or the ministry of, of liturgy, um, the deacon, his um, uh, main um, task in liturgy is to help in the Mass, to help the bishop in the Mass, and also to help not only to the bishop, but also the helpers of the bishop that are the predators. So um, he helped in the, in the Mass um, with the, to the predator. And, and this is very, very important, uh, the ministry of charity, ministry of charity. As I said at the beginning of Christianism, the deacon was, his main task was to serve, to serve the widows and to serve the poor. So um, one of the main tasks of the, of, the, of the deacons now is to serve also the poor, to serve the needy, to serve uh, the immigrants, especially in, in our, in our uh, church here in Bronzeville. Um, to serve uh, the um, immigrants, to serve uh, the poor people, to serve uh, uh, people in jail, to serve uh, um, sick people, sick people. Uh, so those are the three three ministries of uh, main ministries of uh, of the deacon, the 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 ministry of the word, the ministry of the liturgy, and the ministry of uh, charity. Mm. I, the this is I like the way that you explain it because I had not. I think sometimes we forget. The third one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Ministry of Charity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes um, when we talk about the um, deacons, we see the, the, we, when we see the deacons is normally when uh, when we go to mass and we see the deacons serving at the, at the mass. But that's not the only um, uh, ministry of the deacon. I mean, the main ministry of the deacon on uh, for me, the main ministry of the deacon is the what he did in his in the origins that is um, the ministry of uh, charity, the ministry of charity. Sometimes we see the only the, we only see the deacons in mass, but we don't know that those deacons are also working in jails, are also working in uh, in hospitals, are also go visit visit uh, sick people. Uh, they also work with immigrants, and that is a ministry that of the deacon that we don't know. That we don't know, that we don't see, that we don't see, but that is a very, very important task of uh, of, uh, of the deacon. Yeah, thank you for sharing that because that's the behind the scenes. Yeah. We we just see the deacons at mass mm -hmm. and when they're serving, but we don't see when they're serving yes. behind the scenes. Yes. So I think it's it's important to recognize all that they do. Yeah. So we um, or the diocese, shall I say, is getting ready for another class. Yes. Um, it's not so much recruitment, but a discernment phase, would you say? Yeah, I like to call the discernment uh, a phase or the inquiry phase, uh, okay. uh, phase and, um, or informative stage. And um, this is a stage that is going to last uh, until uh, December. We're going to, uh, we just send the applications to the pastors, to the pastors. And um, we're going to be receiving the applications until September the 16th. That's the, the the last day that we're going to receive uh, the applications, and in in, in all this uh, month from here to December, we're going to have uh, meetings with uh, with um, uh, with the applicants, and we're going to have uh, retreats with the applicants. But not only with the applicants, um, for a deacon to be accepted into the program, to the program, the deacon has to be the full support of his family. And especially his wife, his wife. If his wife doesn't support this deacon, um, it could be a um, reason to not to be accepted into the into the program. So the wives is gonna have to. The wives are gonna have to participate. I think in ninety percent of the formation of the deacon, they have to assist to classes. They have to assist to retreat. Why? Because um, being a deacon is gonna change their lives. It's gonna affect their. Uh, their lives and their, their family lives. So uh, and um, uh, and it is it is a it is a commitment for the rest of your life. So you have to have the full support of your wife, of your wife, and uh, 
and the full support of your um, of your family too. That yes. completely makes sense. We've had some deacons share with us the the struggles, some of the initial struggles, mm -hmm. um, even though they attended the retreats together and they discerned together. Mm -hmm. But once the reality set in of well, we would like you to be home, but no, you've got to serve at this funeral, or yeah. you've got to uh, counsel a couple, or you've got to go and uh, do some ministry at the hospital. Yeah. It, it's a family commitment yes. because you also, I can see how you need the support of your family mm -hmm. to be able to go and serve. Because mm -hmm. I can't, I can't even fathom if you, if you're feeling the guilt and the weight of not being home. Mm -hmm. It's hard to do your role, you know, fulfill your obligations as a deacon. Mm -hmm. So I think it's it's wonderful that you're able to include the wives. And like yes. you said, a ninety five percent of the formation will in involve the wives. Yes, yes, it's yes, a big yes. commitment on their part yes. as well. Yes, yes, yes. I um, it is also very very um important for the wife to participate to participate and um. Uh, when we celebrate a mass, uh, I mean a, a wedding, um, a, a wedding mass, uh, we know that in that um, in the wedding, what happens? What happened in the in the weddings? The um, um, bond is formed in the in the in the couple, the couple. So they have to share everything. They have to. They become one flesh, and so um, uh, that's why it's very very important if the deacon is going to receive that seal in his soul of the holy orders not that the wife is going to share that seal but the wife have to support the new life of the deacon the new life of uh, of uh, of, uh, of the deacon um that character that the deacon is going to receive that the deacon receive in 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 his uh, in his ordination and um and also um the role of the deacon is very very important uh for the church the permanent, uh, the permanent deacons are, uh, now they play a very, very important role in the church. Why? Because they live in a daily life, in a secular life. So uh, they know the family problem. They know the society much, much better than us, than the consecrated uh, 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 priests or consecrated uh, sisters. Or uh, Why? Because they live among the people. They have a work, they have to work, they have a family, they have a children, they have a wife, and so they know all the problems of the, the, all the family problems so, um, and all the family issues. And um, so I think that they know the situation, the, the secular situation better than, than us. So uh, that is very, very important, the work of the, of the deacons in, in our church, in our church. And I think, I think that uh, after 1969, that, uh, that uh, the permanent, diaconate was instituted um, again in the in the church it's been a blessing a blessing for uh, for the church right we've been blessed to have several uh, men ordained yes. over the past several years but it's been what since 2000 uh, i think it was uh, five years ago five, five, five years ago. so it's been five years so yeah. it's it's time for a new class yes um so tell let's talk a little bit about the requirements okay um, what are the age requirements and also that discernment process because one can't just sign up and bring their mm. application to you. Yeah. There's a process, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, there is a process. Um, um, we send to the parishes and to the pastors um, application packages and uh, in Spanish and in English. Um, the pastor is the one who is going to choose who is who will be a good candidate. For uh, for the formation, for the formation. So um, nobody can come to bring a, a, an application individually. They have to do it through the pastor, through the pastor. Or if someone has, um, I mean, if someone believes that he has the vocation uh, to be a deacon, and someone wants to know more about the deacon, he can go to the pastor, to the pastor, and tell him, Father, you know what? I'm interested. I'm interested in the the new program and the pastors can recommend him or uh, or not um normally um we said okay uh, only three candidates per parish but now i'm i'm receiving calls uh, from from pastors that said father i have four that they are very very good and i say okay send the fourth so um so uh, they have fourth or or five 
they can apply. They can apply for a, and we're gonna have this uh, time for um, uh, inquiry for this informative uh, stage, and uh, and they can decide if they want to continue in the first uh, phase of formation, that is the aspirancy, and. Um, so, um, and also, and, and, and they can decide if they want to continue or they want to join the formation, the formal formation in, in January, or uh, we can tell them also, you know what, I think that you should wait a little bit uh, more years or, uh, or um, you have to, I don't know, maybe fix this uh, issue or this problem in your, your life. And, uh, and um, for instance, um, if a person, the person have to be, five years in a stable um, canonical um, marriage. So, um, for instance, if a, pers if a person comes that he he's been married for one or two years, that person cannot be a candidate. It has to be five years, five years. So, um, and, and it's not only for, um, for uh, married people, it's for, uh, also for, for um, single, single men. And um, and but they have to make um, it's it's a it's a compromise. It's a, they have to this they have to realize that after being ordained as a deacon, if they if they are not married, they're not gonna be married. They can they're then they're not gonna be able to be married uh, or to get married uh, after being ordained. They have to remain uh, um, single. They have to remain single. And um, the minimal age is uh, 31 years old. And um, a maximum age, we don't have a maximum age. As long as the person has the stamina and the willingness and uh, to uh, go through five years of formation and maybe 10 years after being ordained as a deacon, it doesn't matter the age. I mean, so, uh, and I, the minimal is uh, 31 years old because uh, the canon law says that um, uh, you cannot ordain a, uh, a permanent deacon uh, someone younger than 35. So if I, I calculate, uh, we calculate uh, five years of formation, it's 30 years, so I put 31 year, 31 year just. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. so, um, so they don't have any kind of, any kind of impediment to be, to be ordained. Well, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. And then, <clears throat> talk about. Let's talk a little bit about. This is an area with with a high immigration population. Oh yes. So, is there a um, any stipulations on if maybe we have some newly arrived immigrants who are mm -hmm. still working on their their status? Mm -hmm. um, the immigration status doesn't affect the. Um, uh, the, the, the mis immigration status doesn't affect um, if a person is accepted or not. I mean, it can be an American citizen, it can be a, a legal resident, or it can be also a person who an, an undocumented immigrant. Undocumented immigrant. Um, so um, we don't discriminate in, uh, in our church because of the of, of the immigration status. So. Uh, um, so uh, we're gonna have, we're gonna ask him about the immigration status, but not not uh, not because um, it is important or it is uh, something essential for accepting him or not. Uh, it's just to now uh, is uh, for informative informative mm -hmm. uh, right. uh, yeah uh, purposes purposes yeah. But um, uh, and don't be afraid to tell uh, if you don't have any. You don't have documents. You are undocumented, and uh, we are not going to share that information with uh, with any authority or anything. I mean, it's a it's a private uh, uh, information, and um, so I mean, everyone can uh, apply as long as they have their uh, support of the of their pastors. Okay. Pastors. So if anybody is interested in more information, they should contact their pastor first. Yes, pastor um, first. And then I think you are setting up a website with some additional information yes, for additional that discernment process yes. as yes. well. We're gonna we're gonna yeah, we're gonna um, we're working on on and um on a web page and where they're gonna have all the information, all the information, all the requirements. And then if you feel if they feel that uh 
you, that you fulfill all the requirements and you are interested, talk to the pastor and the pastor has all the, the um, uh, if the pastor said that, that uh, or the pastor, you have the support of the pastor, um, uh, you can apply for that, uh, for uh, to be accepted into the program. But nobody can be, can apply by themselves. I mean, it, it has to be always through the pastor. Okay. Professor. Any advice for those men who are discerning? Um, oh yeah. First, first of all, to speak with um, with a wife, with a family, with a family. Um, don't uh, hide anything from your wife, and um, uh, be always very uh, honest and open with your pastor, and eventually with us, uh, the the formators, the formators, and. Um, it's not only me, the one who is going to decide who is going to be accepted or not, who is going to continue or not. We have a team, we have a, a group of, uh, of, um, of people who are, who are uh, it's the formation team, the formation team. And um, we are uh, seven, seven, uh, seven people, three lay, two lay people, three deacons and two priests. So uh, we're going to be working together with the interviews, with the uh, um, retreats and, uh, and everything. So it's not only me, the one who is going to make the decision. It's going to be a, a group. It's going to be a group. Well, thank you, Father. It's been very uh, insightful, um, this whole, a little, I mean, all the background that you've provided and also the information on those that are, might be discerning uh, the vocation to the permit diaconate. Any closing thoughts? Don't doubt of when you feel something in your heart that you feel that you're being called by God, don't hesitate in listening to the voice of God. And um, sometimes we're afraid, sometimes we, we live, oh, no, I will never uh, be able to preach, for instance, and uh, to talk in front of people, for instance. And uh, some people are afraid of, uh, of, uh, of uh, not being worthy to, to, to be a deacon. So um, don't let that to um, um, can prevent you from applying, from talking to the to your uh, to your pastor. Maybe you can be a great deacon, and you don't know. Maybe you are, you are a you are a great deacon in potency, and you don't know. So uh, so um, believe and uh, and believe in the that the grace of God works in our hearts in our lives, and um, and you feel that in your heart, don't hesitate to, to follow the, the, to listen to the, the voice of God. Thank you so much, Father. Thank, thank you, you for joining us today. And thank you for joining us as well on the, this edition of the Church in the Rio Grande Valley.